Ah, my favorite, the sales versus marketing clash. This is one of the longest and toughest battles in the history of all of business. But here's the thing, it doesn't need to feel like a battle if you can just get aligned on the things that we're gonna cover in this video. I'm Sam Queen. Some people like to call me the clothes doctor and I help businesses with high ticket offers, scale to seven and eight figures using my systems-based selling strategies so no leads ever slip through the cracks for them. If that sounds like you, I'll leave a link down in the description below to book a call with me or someone on my team. In a previous video on this channel, I talked about what that sales versus marketing battle looks like, but in this video, I wanna talk about what it looks like when it's sales and marketing working together within your company. It oftentimes feels like a battle because sales and marketing have different KPIs. They've got different objectives. A blind spot we ran into in one of our businesses is when we were incentivizing the marketing department for booking the cheapest call. Well, here's the thing about the cheapest call. The cheapest call comes with shortcuts. Shortcuts in targeting, shortcuts in copy, shortcuts in funnel configuration. Those shortcuts were then leading to poor lead quality on the phone. What is sales doing? Sales is saying marketing is giving us bad leads. But sales, last month you were telling us we weren't giving you enough leads. Yeah, but these ones are bad, but it's enough. And it goes on and on and on and on. You want better leads? Well, the cost goes up. I'm incentivized in marketing to give you the cheapest lead. You want full calendars on the sales team? Your close percentage goes down. Guess what? Marketing's gonna look at you and say it's your fault. Your close percentage isn't good enough. So how do we get aligned on that? You also find that sometimes messaging and marketing is different than the messaging in sales. If you have a real estate offer and your marketing messaging is saying how to do 10 deals in the next month, but everyone on the phone is just trying to do their first deal and we're pitching the value proposition of getting their first deal done within the next 30 days, those are two different messages that are not aligned with each other throughout the flow of a lead through its marketing and sales journey. And most marketers aren't salespeople. Most salespeople aren't marketers. <laughs> we had someone in one of our companies look at at the paycheck that the salespeople were getting and say, wow, I'm way underpaid. That gentleman was immediately offered a job on the sales team. He could happily take sales calls and increase his pay by facilitating those deals. But guess what? He's not a salesperson. That's not what he knows how to do. He's not qualified to do it. He immediately turned that down. That was the end of that conversation. But still, oftentimes, we just don't know what each other's worlds look like, what our roles look like, what our day-to-day -day looks like, where our time is being spent. We have no idea if you are just siloed in that one world. So what does it look like when it's a clean relationship for your business and we focus on the most important thing and that is closing the marketing to sales feedback loop. So what I mean by closing this marketing to sales feedback loop is having your salespeople be able to give information about the leads and the conversations that they're having on the phone to your marketing people so your marketing people can write better ads, write better copy with better call outs to better audiences to give your salespeople better leads so those salespeople can come back and say, hey, here's what I'm seeing on the phone so the marketing people, so on and so forth. It is a feedback loop. This is especially important when you're doing something new. If you're in a zero to one environment, like I find myself in a lot, where I'm building businesses from scratch, you're really gonna wanna focus on closing that marketing to sales feedback loop. If you have an early stage software business, you have a marketing to sales to product feedback loop that's very important. What are we hearing on the phones for the product and what they want in the product and the features and benefits and putting that into the marketing messaging and putting it into the product. So then the next sales call, we can say, yes, we do have that feature and benefit inside the product program. That's what the feedback loop looks like. That is another feedback loop throwing product into the mix. So if you're really able to dial in this feedback loop, you're going to find that your avatar is going to get painted clearer and clearer and clearer every single day because your stats and data are going to get clearer and clearer every single day. If you can integrate marketing stats with sales stats, you'll see all of the journey a customer took to land on a salesperson's calendar. For me and buying businesses, we use Hyros to accomplish that. If you go into the click history of a lead inside of Hyros, you'll see all of the ads they interacted with and all of the pages and products that they've interacted with in your business. That is a painted picture of our marketing journey. And if we look inside of close.com and we look at the custom activities that we're using as big blocks in our sales process that I talk about in another video called how to map your sales process, I'll link it down below. If we look at this custom activity journey, we're seeing the Hyros equivalent of a click history with what the leads journey looked like inside of the sales process. Now I have a very clear timeline on exactly every single step this lead took in my marketing process, every single step that this lead took in my sales process, and the marketing and sales team can now look at that together and say, 
how do we do more of this? Not only are you gonna find that you're gonna sell more stuff, but you're really gonna improve the morale in your company overall, the culture in your company, the excitement in your company. There's not gonna be any grudges that the sales department is holding against the marketing department or the marketing department is holding against the sales department because there doesn't have to be if you're always aligned and on the same page and you're incentivizing your sales department with the wrong North Star KPI and they're not aligned like the example that I used earlier in this video about the lead call. The best part about this is if you're able to fix a communication and animosity within your business and you're able to align KPIs between departments, things will really start to get fun. So if you're looking for the right sales KPIs to track, I have another video that I filmed on exactly that topic that I'll link in the description below. You should see it on screen here. And if you're looking for the right marketing KPIs to track, the sales guy in me is going to say ROAS and it should always be return on ad spend. Thanks for hanging out with me again in another video. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below, and I will see you in the next one.